exchange-traded funds have been growing in momentum in Australia. Joining me today to discuss where the market is heading and what's next for ETF innovation is Van Eck Global Australian Managing Director, Ariane Neron. Welcome, Ariane. Thank you, Liz. Thank you for having me. So, Ariane, how big is the ETF market at present? Mm, the, the ETF market's growing, and where assets are at as of the end of July, uh, we're just shy uh, of, of $20 billion. So we're at $19.86 billion. Now, that is a fraction of the global ETP industry, which is around US $2.98 trillion, so expected to surpass that $3 trillion mark. Okay. And is the market showing any signs of slowing down, or can we expect this growth to continue? The market is growing from strength to strength. Um, there's no sign of slowing down. And really, if I answer this question in two parts, it's really, if we look at flows, and then if we look at actual exchange traded products listed on the ASX. So if we look at flows, um, we can see that from June 2014 to June 2015, the market's grown by about 50, 56%. And if we look at the average net monthly inflows from 2014 to 2015, the calendar 2014 average net flows has increased from 357 million per month to 2015, the average net monthly inflows to 518 million. So that's a 45% increase. So that is a real strong sign of actual um, new growth in inflows. And then on the other side, we've got actual, the, uh, the amount or the number of exchange traded products on the exchange. Um, we're at 124 new products, or 124 products on exchange, of which 19 are new in 2015 alone, of which 10 are strategic beta and, and two are active managers listing their flagship offerings. Okay, so do you expect we'll see new players enter the market as a result of this growth? Mm, absolutely. I mean, Australia is the second largest pension market in the world, the fourth largest um, um, global funds management market. Um, there are a lot of different ETF and ETP providers. There's 265 issuers globally. In Australia, we only have 11. Uh, globally, we have 5,800 ETPs with 11, 000, over 11,300 cross listings. In Australia, as I mentioned before, there's only 124 products. So we think the, the value opportunity, the opportunity set in Australia for other ETP providers, as well as active managers who have incumbent businesses in Australia, uh, will definitely see more products proliferate. Right. And what types of new products do you expect to be introduced to the market? So we see innovations really focusing on strategic beta now. Uh, there's a lot of market beta being captured in the existing product set. Um, really, strategic beta is anything that is not market capitalization. There are a lot of different terms out there, such as smart beta, uh, being socialized around. Um, but we see the innovation will focus around strategic beta, um, around similar asset classes and also new asset classes. And then on the other side, the innovation we see will be around these exchange traded managed funds. So this will be active managers looking to list their flagship offering in the format of an exchange traded managed fund. Okay, so, so far, ETF asset classes have represented Australian shares, international shares, and fixed income. Mm. What's the next step for the industry? So we've seen, I mean, to add to those asset classes, we've got currency and commodity exchange traded products as well. So we've got a lot of market beta offerings out there. So we're seeing that on the back of strategic beta, there's going to be the same asset classes, but offering investors a different outcome. So it's a targeted outcome. And by way of example, for instance, we launched our market vectors, Australian Equal Weight ETF, um, which is uh, a portfolio of 71 of the largest and most liquid securities in Australia. Now, there's a lot of academia supporting that uh, equal weighted strategy outperforms market cap. And we've been able to demonstrate that with our one year return being about 300 basis points alpha relative to market cap. So what that will mean is there'll be a lot more different, in, well, there'll be a lot of innovation surrounding existing asset classes like Australian shares, um, access to international shares, and also access to the likes of Asian shares as well. Okay. How have financial planners been using ETF products so far? Are they recognising them as a mainstream product now? Mm. I mean, the first part is how they've been using them. So the way we've been seeing uh, financial planners and, and also stockbrokers really use ETFs, it's really as building blocks for portfolio. Um, I think the the fact that everyone knows the ETF benefits, the diversification, uh, liquidity, transparency, and the cost effectiveness is, is really well known. It's well regarded. 
Um, but what it's really doing in terms of the advisor's business, the value proposition is it's making them more efficient. There are no application forms which are quite cumbersome. Um, it's easy as trading a share. Um, and they can really build a well-constructed, well-diversified portfolio out of you know, one, two, three, or even five ETFs. So this really aligns well to, I guess, empowering advisors, empowering the clients by demonstrating that they can show transparency, they can show the cost effectiveness of the ETFs, and also that tradability. I think it's quite important because markets are dynamic. I mean, the other part is it's quite aligned to a fee-for-service model. So in a post-FOFA world, um, it aligns quite well. There's a lot of scalability behind that. I mean, to answer your, the second part of your question around, is our ETFs a mainstream yet? I mean, in Australia, in Australia, our view, it's certainly not. It's just past this embryonic growth rate. I think we're coming off a low base, uh, particularly if you look at the, the, the grand scheme of things in Australian funds management. Um, you've got a wide range of different ad adoption use from people who've been using ETFs for over 10 years to, to new users who've only come on board in the last... Uh, two to three years. Um, in the States, in the US, in Europe, you could certainly say it's, it's more mainstream, it's a, it's a hyper-competitive market, there's a lot of different product offerings. As I said, globally there's 5,800 ETPs, um, which is quite a lot. Um, so we see really Australian awareness of ETFs, that's where that's become mainstream. And I think that's really a factor to do with all the ETF issuers, really educating the market as to the benefits and also usages of ETFs in portfolios. Sure, and what initiatives are you looking at to help educate advisors and investors about ETFs? So last year we launched an educational initiative um, which was CPD accredited for financial advisors, really um, articulating and demonstrating the benefits of ETFs, the mechanics of them and how to use them. Uh, now that initiative was, was very well received and we have a lot of advisors on our educational program but we're looking to extend on that with uh, adding new, mo new modules for financial advisors and that will really um, demonstrate um, uh, s some knowledge and insight as to really using ETFs in international investing for international portfolios, um, looking at smart beta or strategic beta, um, explaining what it is, uh, how it's the intersection between active and passive, but most importantly how to use it in a portfolio. We think there needs to be a strong emphasis on portfolio construction. We believe that's the second stage um, of the educational curve. Okay, and what can we expect next from Market Vectors? Mm. So 2015 has been a very busy year for, for us. We've launched four new products on the exchange. Um, back in May, we launched the first strategic beta small cap dividend pays ETF, uh, MVS. Um, and then we launched three, of our, three cross lists. Uh, first, first product we launched was a Market Vectors Gold Miners ETF. Now the Gold Miners ETF is investing in gold equities, uh, gives investors the operational leverage of gold bullion, um, but most importantly the, the deep liquidity that that product offers, it's the, one of the world's um, most actively traded ETFs. Um, so we launched that as well as the Morningstar uh, Wide Moat or MOAT is the ASX code, and also the first of its kind China A-Shares ETF which tracks the CSI 300. So really that really wraps up the theme of, of what we've done uh, in 2015. And going forward, we, we'll continue to look at market distortions, market opportunities, and really provide investors with either superior or targeted outcomes but, um, based on the incumbent type passive strategies or offering them in, uh, investments where they're, they're trying to uh, access asset classes such as China A shares, but they've previously not been able to. Great. Thanks so much for joining me, Ariane. Thank you for having me.